What is inflation? You must have heard of countries facing inflation, and sometimes the news is always on the negative end, but you really don't understand what inflation means. Don't worry, we got you covered, so what's inflation? Let's begin with the most commonly used definition, which states that inflation is an increase in the average price level of goods and services or a decline in the purchasing power of the standard unit of currency. In simple terms, it shows how much more expensive a specific set of goods or services has become over a specific time period, most commonly measured in years. Let's further simplify by examining the price of a one-pound loaf of white bread in the U.S. over a 25-year period. According to the United States Department of Labor's Bureau of Statistics, a loaf of white bread cost around 59 cents in January 1988. The same loaf of bread became $1.42 in January 2013. Throughout the course of the 25 years, the price of bread grew by 83 cents or 140 percent. This shows that the same unit of money can no longer buy the same quantity of bread. While individual product price changes are easy to track over time, human needs extend beyond just one or two products. We need a wide range of products and services in order to live a comfortable life. Some of the consumables we need besides food include utilities such as electricity and transportation, and services such as healthcare, entertainment, and labor. Inflation seeks to assess the overall impact of price changes on this wide range of goods and services. Because prices do not all rise at the same rate, tools such as the Consumer Price Index are frequently used to measure inflation. These tools measure what is known as the rate of inflation by giving a gross evaluation of the changes in the price level of goods and services over time. The inverse of inflation is known as deflation and occurs when the inflation rate falls below 0% and prices fall overall. Why does inflation occur? The first thing you must know is that inflation is a common and natural side effect of economic expansion. This is because, in a thriving economy, businesses expand and hire more workers, therefore reducing unemployment. Households subsequently have more money to spend, causing demand for products and services to rise and prices to rise. During normal economic expansion, prices rise slowly as money slowly enters the economy. However, if the money supply grows too quickly in relation to the size of an economy, the currency's unit value falls, in other words, its purchasing power falls, and prices rise. So, it seems to reason that a rapid inflow of trillions of money, such as the stimulus funds given during the pandemic, could cause prices to rise swiftly. This scenario is known as an example of high inflation or hyper-hyperinflation. You need to know that inflation doesn't have a singular cause. Low to moderate rates of inflation are caused by changes in the actual demand for goods and services or adjustments in the supply of goods and services. For example, as we've witnessed, pandemics or wars can disrupt production or raise production costs. This can reduce overall supply, subsequently causing prices to increase in a manner known as cost push inflation. On the other hand, if an economy's demand exceeds its production capacity, the resulting strain on resources is reflected in what is known as demand pull inflation. What are the benefits and negatives of inflation? First, low to moderate rates of inflation can cause disadvantages such as an increase in the opportunity cost of withholding money or uncertainty about future inflation, which can lead people to panic and hoard goods. A wrong assumption most people make is thinking inflation is always beneficial to companies and large corporations. This is because companies are well known for passing off higher costs of production to consumers in the form of higher prices. However, companies are often forced to absorb higher production costs, especially in situations when they would risk losing customers to foreign-based competitors who are unaffected by the increased costs. There are definitely several positive consequences of inflation top of which includes, serving as a boost to investors who hold assets in inflation-affected markets. People who own shares in energy corporations, for instance, may enjoy a gain in the value of their investments if energy costs increase. Some businesses also benefit from inflation if they can charge more for their products as a result of increased demand. When the economy is doing well and there is a high demand for housing, home building companies can charge higher prices for selling homes. To combat inflation, policymakers and appropriate monetary authorities, like the central bank, first have to determine the cause of inflation and then implement the appropriate disinflationary policies. Even after learning all of these powerful tips I've just taught you, you still not know everything about saving money. Believe it or not, more informations you need are in this video right here. With the situation of your country, are you facing inflation? Comment below.